Hi guys, this is Survi from the Mom Store, and uh, we will be having here with us today Arushi, who's a lactation consultant, and we'll be talking about various issues that uh, a mom faces during breastfeeding. What is what can be done, and how can an expecting mother prepare herself for breastfeeding? Hi Arushi. Hey, hi, hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me here. Yeah, we are very happy to be part of this session. This is such an important week, uh, the breastfeeding week, and it really calls up for us to you know, talk about the myths related to breastfeeding and what all can women know with, before they step into motherhood as well as how do they deal with all the issues that comes along with breastfeeding after they become young moms. Yeah. So welcome. Yeah, sorry. No, no, I'm saying just welcome to our expert talk with the mom store. And we're very glad to have you and hear what you, uh, what you have to say and help all the mommies regarding breastfeeding. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, yes, of course, it's a very, very um, important topic because I am talking more as a mother first and then as a professional because my own struggles got me passionate about the cause and it was not as easy I th as I thought it would be. So uh, it is something which definitely uh, is something very, very important because as soon as you deliver your child, you're expected to feed your child every two hours and yes. then your life starts to revolve around it. So if it is not something which comes to you with ease or you're not uh, you know, comfortable with it, then motherhood in general becomes an uphill task. So yeah. uh, uh, yes, of course, if you're prepared, if you know what to expect after you deliver, then uh, it makes your entire life actually very easy because uh, instinctively every mother wants to feed her child and it is only because she's not guided enough or because of some misinformation is that you know she's unable to do it and uh, that guilt is carried with her throughout her life that I couldn't give my child the best uh, you know uh, when we started. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I really, really feel it's very, very important for all moms to know and understand uh, because more prepared they are, the lesser roadblocks they'll have in their journey. Right. And I think we'll touch upon all the various topics that you spoke about right now, starting from preparation to, you know, how to breastfeed soon after your delivery to, uh, you know, how to have a smooth journey and mitigate those challenges that come along with it. So let's just get started. Uh, I think I've written in the post as well and I truly believe that, you know, just like you don't go unprepared for an exam, you cannot walk into motherhood unprepared because there are so many different aspects. There are physical changes, there are biological changes, mental changes that come along with motherhood and a tiny little baby becomes completely dependent on the mother for at least the first six months of its uh, life. So breastfeeding is such an important milestone. And so let's start with the basics. You know, an expecting mommy who's in her seventh or eighth month about to deliver, how should she be preparing herself for breastfeeding? And what all is it that she needs to know before she goes into the delivery room? Correct. So the first uh, very important thing which I want to touch is uh, having realistic expectation. Uh, the biggest challenge or the biggest, uh, you know, uh, challenge I would say which I see every mother facing is that as soon as she delivers, she squirts her breast expecting like a fountain or a squirt of milk coming out, you know. And when she doesn't see that, uh, she's more, she's told by people around her that, you know, you're not producing enough, you're not producing enough. So that is the first seed of, you, uh, uh, you know, not being confident that is put in her mind that she, her supply is low. So first thing which I want to tell all moms that you're not expected to make more than 37 ml, which is about two to three spoons per feed in your first 24 hours. So if you're expecting that, you know, every time and, and you know, uh, just pressing your breast is not an indicator to know if you're producing enough or not, because this is what every mother does. You know, especially mm -hmm. for, for, uh, for the first time mothers who are experiencing it for the first time, they always press their breast to see that am I producing enough? I think I can see some drops. 
so firstly having realistic expectations in the first 1 to 2 3 uh, 1 to 3 days we don't expect you to have a lot of milk because this is the training time the children uh, the babies are not used to uh, feeding they are not used to you know uh, having the suck swallow breathing coordination so this is a training time for the children to learn how to feed so if the ejection is too fast they will start choking on it so that's mm. why firstly remember that uh, you know it's absolutely okay to just produce some drops that is what is expected and that is enough for the baby because in the beginning yeah. the children's uh, you know stomach size is of a pea so you can imagine how much milk do you need to fill that so uh, yeah. it's just continue feeding and uh, don't you know get into self doubt so right. this is something very very important which i feel uh, second thing which i really want to highlight is that uh, uh, early initiation is very very important some mothers once they get into this whole self doubt phase and they feel that they are not lactating enough they feel that if they give some time you know is when they will start to feel fuller is is then is when uh, the, you know the body will start to make milk but that is generally not the case so time is an enemy in this situation so the more mm-hmm. you feed your child the more the breast is emptied is uh, when your supply will be established and you will start to feel you know engorge you start to feel fuller and you will be able to produce more milk for your baby so yeah. as soon as you can feed your child i mean today uh, because of the medical protocol not everything is in our control but as soon as you get your child as soon as you can feed the child you should start the process and start feeding as and when the baby is demanding i think i want to add one thing here that the first milk that comes is a yellowish liquid called colostrum colostrum right? correct and that is like liquid gold in fact yes. a lot of in some traditions it's a some people believe that you know it's not healthy and needs to be discarded and the white milk will start coming after that but it's that milk which is the most essential and full of antibodies correct uh, can you talk for more about the benefits of colostrum yes and- it's like an absolute absolutely most important thing which you can give to the child so the milk changes its composition as per the need of the baby it's the most customized food for your child and because when you deliver the baby the child is suddenly at risk uh, you know of so many infections because he is you know so many people will touch him and this is the first time he will breathe in air that he needs to have very good immunity and that's why colostrum is very very high in antibodies and it is very very high in protein because uh, this is what the child can digest very easily so colostrum mm-hmm. is very crucial it is again in drops but it has it is more powerful than one entire bottle of formula milk yeah so uh, there is absolutely no match so uh, you know also the only thing which i tell every mother is that don't think too much just make it make it a point that you feed your child as soon as your child demands put the baby to the breast and feed so because the baby the mother, the body will be able to decide what to give the mother the baby you know yeah. you don't really yeah. have to think is it yellow is it white why is it watery because a lot of times you know we get into this analysis paralysis where they are telling why am i seeing translucent drops why am i not seeing yellowish uh, milk why this color why that color so that is something which we need not get into just feed the baby because the natural process is so beautiful and so perfect that it knows what is best for your child so your yeah. only job is to feed and nothing else yeah i think that's right and uh, coming to uh, now the feeding process uh, initially during the first breastfeeding week or you know the journey that the mother takes a lot of women tend to suffer from sore nipples that's because they may not be aware of the right latch and you know the baby may not instinctively know what the correct latch is and breastfeeding is not about nipples so can you share more information about deep latch and shallow latch and how do you train your little baby to do the correct latch because if the mom is aware she will have a much smoother journey as well Yes, uh, that's absolutely right. Latch is very, very essential in the beginning because ninety percent of the problems is because of a shallow latch. So, uh, to get a good latch, firstly, the right position is very, very important. The mother used to uh, mother has to give the right access to the breast to the baby. 
you know mm-hmm. so if you're not holding the your baby correctly and if the child is feeling that the baby might just slip off you know the baby is not held and there is no positional stability then the child's entire concentration is that i might fall so again they're not able to feed very properly so firstly every mother whatever position you choose you always have to sit with some kind of back support you're never sitting in the middle of nowhere and then you know taking your child because you never bring the baby to the you never bring the breast to the baby you always bring the baby to the breast so that is very very important and then you hold the child in such a way that the whole body of your child is supported by your hand mm. so that he feels safe and secure and mm. secondly the child's face should be facing the breast so that he mm. has a right access then you wait for the child to open a big mouth like a yawn which they instinctively do so if you touch their nose you know with your nipple or you just uh, stimulate their chin you will see they open this big mouth like a wide big mouth and that is your cue to push your child so that he takes the entire like a big bite of your breast not just yeah. the nipple the entire areola the brown part in the mouth and when the child is suckling you will be able to feel the draws you know yeah. which are very strong draws and that's when you can feel that oh, the milk is being drawn and you can hear the uh, swallows so that is your sign that you are on the right path yeah i think one trick that i used to do and because i had read about it before i uh, delivered was that uh, she, my daughter used to actually bite the nipple in the beginning her mouth was very really small and she didn't know and it would be hurting me so when she was like really hungry i actually used to let her cry a lot because then the mouth is completely open and then like put to the put her to the breast so that she also actually grabs it in that you know uh, that kind of greed and uh, thing passion so that really helps because it helps to draw the milk a lot faster it improves the supply as well right definitely definitely uh, yeah. so this is what it is that uh, i mean uh, every mother and baby eventually they have their own tricks and techniques and which is very unique to the diet so uh, yeah. the whole the idea one, is one is well. yeah so the whole idea is to just empower the mothers to create that belief that they can feed the rest mm. rest everything they'll figure it out the problem right now is that most of the mothers are in self doubt they are very scared to hold their baby like who, my pregnant uh, mothers who are pregnant who come to me their biggest uh, uh, anxiety is that how will i hold my child i i don't know i'm i've been always scared of newborn babies you know what if if the baby falls and yeah. you never held a child inside you also this is also the, your first time exactly. so if you are able to deliver you will be able to take care of your baby you know so uh, that belief has to be there within the mothers and then i feel that no we don't it's not a rocket science because it's a very natural process so as you figured out a way which worked for your child every mother has these really creative unique ways which they come up with so that it works for them but the idea is that they need to do it you know they are, they don't have to give up and they don't have to get into the self doubt that oh i'm not making enough milk my child is never uh, full with my milk the child is not thriving i don't think uh, i think his health is at stake so these are the negative thoughts which needs to be eliminated more than anything else yeah true and um, you know since we've talked about this let's also talk about another issue that uh, women face very often which is clogged milk ducts or you know uh, breast becoming hard and what can we, and this usually happens during the first period when the um you know the body is producing more milk and uh, there is a fast let down if there's no let down and the breast become rock hard so what can women do to you know prevent issues like mastitis or any breast abscess so what are your views on that so firstly uh, the root cause of all these problems are ineffective milk removal if the mother is not feeding the baby on cue and she is feeding by the clock or if she is missing the feeding sessions whenever the child is demanding is when the milk stays with milk stasis happens in the breast the milk is stayed in it stays in the breast and that leads to first a clogged duct if milk is not even removed then then it leads to engorgement still if milk is not removed then it leads to a worse form which is mastitis and the last is an abscess you know mm. so to not uh, get into there the most important thing is removal of milk so in the beginning as you rightly said that uh, you know the mothers start to feel little engorged because yes the breast is actively you know increasing in size because it wants to prepare itself for lactation 
but at mm. any point if there is discomfort if there is pain you know any kind of discomfort they need to remove milk so if for some reason the child is not able to latch because if the breast are too hard and engorged the child is unable to latch so they start you know slipping off the breast so it's very very important that you start removing your milk and in the beginning hand expression works the best Mm. so when you are feeling uh, like you know very uh, that uh, the breasts are getting very heavy you can use hot fermentation to really heat on your breast in form of like uh, through a hot water bottle or a wet towel before uh, you uh, start using your hand expression and then hand express all the milk till you start to feel comfortable so mm. this is uh, very very crucial so milk removal is the key so that you don't get into this uh, all these problems otherwise eventually after 40 days the body naturally calibrates as per the need of the child ki uh, you know if it has to increase the supply it increases if it has to decrease it it decreases it so that that is a natural process yeah it is <laughs> and uh, so since we talked about expression what is the right time to start pumping and you know under what circumstances should women be pumping i know it, it can be a choice it can also be a need Yes. So, yeah. So in the beginning, as I said, uh, in the first one to eight days, hand expression works better because the quantity of milk is not a lot, and uh, you know suctioning and the and the uh, mother's nipples are not used to any kind of suckling or any kind of suctioning. You know, so that is when they are vulnerable to any kind of wear and tear. Of course, that breast pumps are absolutely safe. if use it rightly so the flan size has to be correct the suctioning has to be correct because any of this if is there's a mismatch then it can lead to problems so as you rightly said that sometimes there is a need if your child is in the nicu or if the child is not taking directly at the breast it is very very important that you start removing your milk otherwise it will start harming you and also it is the second best option if if you're not to give directly you must offer the child the expressed milk because it is still again 100 times better than top feed so expression uh, breast pumps if used wisely is a very beautiful tool because you know it at least allows the mother to offer breast milk if breastfeeding is not established in the beginning days and uh, again it is very very crucial to maintain the supply because if not if the child is also not taking at the breast and the mother is not removing the milk with any other device so the milk will start dipping mm. so uh, breast pumps are very very crucial so that we can we are able to maintain a good milk supply and in that process we can teach the child how to latch and to take milk from the breast directly right um another question that had come up uh, yesterday when we asked people out for comments is that what is a nursing strike and you know why do some children refuse the breast and in such cases how do you get them to latch again or and breastfeed them so uh, first thing we need to understand the underlying cause as to why the baby is refusing the breast you know sometimes uh, it could be that the uh, the breast are too hard so the child is unable to latch sometimes some mothers have a very fast let down and so the child starts to choke on it so they start refusing you know uh, there could be multiple reasons as to why the child is refusing and in the beginning sometimes because of the medical intervention when the mother and child are separated and the first feed is not mother's milk it is top feed then again we have to reboot the system because uh, they learn and come how to suck but once they are offered top feed through any other device they unlearn it so we have to sort mm. of reboot their system and have to teach them again how to feed so there could be many reasons uh, as to why the child is refusing the breast but what is most essential is that the mother bonding should not be hampered so to mm. um, to boost the mother and baby bonding we always recommend skin to skin contact so skin to skin contact is a very very simple tool but it's very very powerful and it can be used by all mothers with all age groups and that is where you know when if you put the child on your uh, chest and you bring the child to your skin a lot of happy hormones are released in both the mother and the baby's body you know which help in helps in boosting your uh, uh, your bond helps in boosting the mother's milk supply and then the child of self attaches to the breast is is our first cue that breastfeeding is working for us yeah so with what the yeah the women should do is to get frustrated about it yeah. because 
feelings get reflected in the child's feelings. So if they are irritated, the child will also get irritated. If they feel that they don't know what to do, the child will also feel directionless. And so it is important to be confident, to enjoy this period, as well as let your child do what the teacher has taught it to do. Correct. Right? Correct. Yes, you you said a very important point because uh, stress is the biggest inhibitor of milk supply. And you know this is what happens that we enter this vicious circle where if it is not happening, the mothers are getting more anxious and flustered, which reflects in the you know in the children. So even they get anxious. So rather than us helping them in breastfeeding, they go more and more away from it. So whether it's happening or not happening, firstly you are no less a mother. So that is one thing which every mother needs to know, and also only if you're a little calmer and you know uh, you must take some practice deep breathing exercises. This is a must for all mothers because especially our we millennial mothers are really hyper. I mean, it, and I I put myself also in that uh, category because you know with the smallest every time even the child sneezes or. Burps, or you know, he hiccups and moves in the uh, sleep. Is when we start googling that is this normal? You know, is this okay? Uh, I hope my child is okay. You know, why is he not? Uh, yesterday he uh, had his feet eight times. Today he's only having it seven times. So what could be the reason? You know, so these are all the uh, things where uh, all the anxiety, and also we have so much information from all kinds of direction that it's making our situation worse. You know, it's like information overload. and then we have all the more confused ki what is right and what is wrong so uh, i think staying calm and uh, enjoying the journey is the most important thing because everything else will fall in place if given some time mm-hmm. and i think uh, you rightly said but you just uh, made it a passing point but i think we need to emphasize that every time you feed your baby and then work the baby there will be curdled milk which will come out and that's absolutely normal it doesn't mean that your child is vomiting yeah and that part of strengthening the digestive system as well right arushi correct so little spit up is okay as you said uh, so and that is generally if the child is not burped rightly so uh, so it is that's why burping is very very important you need to put your child upright and you know pat him and uh, so that uh, he is able to burp so it's again it's not important that he makes that burping noise you know mm. it is what is more important is putting him upright so that whatever gas molecules he has inhaled he can release it and he's not in discomfort so if with gas molecules he spits up a little milk it's normal but uh, it's not uh, it doesn't happen always again but vomiting is a problem when you see that you know there is the propensity is a lot that in his, that is when we need to look into it but little spit up is absolutely okay yeah yeah Well, I we started having a lot of questions, so I think we should directly jump into it and, uh, sure. you know, attend all of them. Our uh, first question is: How long can we store breast milk? Right. So uh, you, can, you can keep the breast milk in room temperature for about four hours, and you can keep it in the fridge if the child is not consuming within four hours. Uh, but it has to be stored at the back of the fridge and not on at the in the door. because the temperature change can spoil it so there you can keep it for about 3 days and uh, uh, and if you really want to store it for longer time you can freeze it for 3 months okay but how do you thaw the frozen milk i think that's a question which is very common and since you can't like really heat it on a stove people yes. have this question how do you thaw the frozen milk and how do you use it for the baby so you can uh, uh, it's a you know double bath what double water bath which we use so you basically use not boiling water but warm water and you dip the container of the milk in it so generally mm. they recommend that it is a gradual uh, you know thawing for 30 minutes that you put it and not there's not a sudden temperature change the other mistake mm. which people do is that they immediately remove it from the fridge and put it in boiling water you know so mm. that uh, the child that the uh, uh, the milk immediately changes its temperature and then they feed the child so the immediate mm. the sudden temperature change makes a lot of antibodies dysfunction so mm. the correct way to do is that it has to be a gradual change and eventually you get it to room temperature in like say 30 minutes of time mm. and then you can feed the baby so the, uh, so this is the right way also there is a lot of uh, you know heating uh, they 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 like lot of uh, these products are there in the market which helps in heating of the milk so if anybody is actually 
totally on if every if any child is totally on pumped milk then you can invest in things like these because at least there's not much of a different uh, temperature change mm. so those products yeah. can also be used but otherwise this uh, hot water warm water works the best at home okay yeah. uh nishka tj has asked us uh, till what age night feedings are to be continued my baby is 3 months old it You're is uh, very early i think <laughs> uh, till your feeding child night time feeding is very very important uh, your prolactin levels are highest in the night and also children cannot sustain for very long you know like you can't expect them to sleep through the night because uh, whatever you feed them especially breast milk gets very easily digested and then they need to be you know uh, fed again so please i understand for mothers it's not easy but the good news is that when you are feeding your child oxytocin induces sleep so it's never that you're wide awake you know and uh, if your child is demanding very frequently you can definitely feed lying down you know so that you can also get some comfort but night time feeding is very very important and please don't uh, think that you, it will stop i mean it will only stop when you wean your child completely which i yeah. hope is not before at least 1 1 and a half years yeah yeah um is it common to get lumps in the areola no it is not mm-hmm. common in the beginning again if it's a lactating breast it could be but make sure that you again use hot fermentation and you remove milk to immediately get rid of those lumps because otherwise those lumps can create other problems so a uh, beginning there might be little lumps but make sure that you get rid of them immediately and don't let rather you can't just leave them right just like that and before we get on to other questions i think one more important thing that we should be discussing is what is the diet of breastfeeding woman should have so that her uh, lactation can be maintained and uh, you know what are the uh, there are so many supplements available in the market what's advisable what's not So, firstly, how does the woman know, know that she needs it? I think that's also an important question. How do they yeah. know that? They need it? So, they firstly going just uh, very naturally. Mothers don't need anything extra. Uh, they they need additional, let's say, about five hundred calories a day to make milk. Five hundred calories is a very very small snack. It could be just like an avocado sandwich, some you know nuts. It's not a very big meal, you know, which is which any way your body demands. So actually, the the thumb rule is that listen to your body. You know, if you are hungry, you need to eat something, and uh, naturally you start to feel thirsty because your body uses uh, your milk is about eighty seven percent water. So then you naturally need to uh, you feel thirsty, so you should drink, and when you feel tired, you should sleep. so if you are listening to your body you don't need to consciously make an effort to uh, you know eat and uh, drink water and do these things because uh, the again the myth is that whether you are eating or you are not eating your body will continue to make milk after a point because it shifts from endocrine to autocrine system the only thing why you need to eat is a, a balanced diet is for your own health so as you said that what food should i eat so that my milk supply gets boosted you know it is more important that you eat so that your reserves are not depleted otherwise mm-hmm. milk would be made at the cost of your reserves because uh, i keep giving this example that you know we see so many beggars on the road laborers feeding their child day in and day out and we are not even sure if they got two square meals you know in the mm-hmm. day but it's not that their supply diminishes or their child they doesn't get enough milk the only thing which is very very important is that uh, keep a balanced diet don't overdo uh, with anything don't overeat or undereat you cannot go on a diet while you're feeding your baby because we can't uh, expect you to lose more than a pound in one week so which is approximately 2 kilos in a month you know and that also after 6 weeks so yeah. uh, other than that just listen to your body keep it simple go by your body's cue and that that should take you a long way and i think an important indication of uh, whether the child is getting enough breast milk or not is the pee and poo count yes. and i think if that fine and even the weight is not as per the percentile there's nothing really to worry about every yes. child is different Definitely. and uh, there's no reason to fret and keep questioning yourself and the child because that's only going to create more problems definitely yes you could rightly put it that is very very important 
Yeah. Uh, when is the right time to introduce bottle to babies? And I think yeah, so. here when you would need formula or yeah, just any so. bottle uh, pump milk. Yeah. So I mean, until unless there is actually a practical need that you have to leave your child and you are working, you know, of course it's a mother's decision. But if you ask me, I would say that as much as you can avoid bottles, it's better because it does more harm than good. you know bottles are not for convenience it was made for emergency when the mothers were unable to feed or you know there was no other way of giving the child nutrition so uh, it is only that the struggle is only the first 6 months after that you the child is uh, introduced to solids so even if you have to leave your baby you can always give uh, the child solids when you are not around you know so um, definitely it's not one of the best decisions but yes if you really feel the need then uh you can do it as in when you want you know there is no right or wrong uh my daughter takes breast milk only for 5 to 6 minutes from her third month um again duration of the feed frequency of the feed if your fee- uh, breast is feeling heavy or not uh, you know if suddenly you're not feeling that heaviness is a not a sign that you're not producing enough uh children at once they grow their suctioning becomes very very strong so they don't need to be at the breast for so long also this age is such that they are very distract they are very uh, they are very easily distracted you know they are suddenly exploring the world so keeping them at the breast for very long becomes difficult so again as uh, you had said that if the child is gaining fine if he's a, he or she is an active baby peeing pooping fine the sleeping pattern is okay then there's nothing to worry Right. You know, so and one thing about pooping is that breastfed babies do not poop even for ten minutes at a stretch because yes. breast milk is completely absorbed by the body uh, of the child. And uh, so another common question that always comes up is that my baby hasn't pooped in a week, and for exclusively breastfed babies, it's absolutely normal. Definitely, very rightly put. They can poop poop ten times in a day after every feed. or they can go without pooping for 10 straight days both situations are absolutely normal okay the next question is everyone says it should be a 20 minute feeding session should i worry about it i think this is something you took up in your last uh, response as well that there is no time it only depends on your baby uh they will take maybe 5 10 minutes in the beginning and they will increase your sessions as and when they are growing So as long as the pee and poop count are normal, you should not worry about the duration of the session. Uh, my baby is always demanding for milk after feeding half an hour and pukes a lot of curdled milk. Is the baby never overfed? Um, so breastfeeding children are never generally are not overfed because the breast milk naturally has the component called leptin, which tells you when they are satiated. Uh, it could be a case of uh, you know an oversupply firstly or a shallow latch. So if the child is not latched properly, as we discussed, he even though if he is sucking for twenty minutes, he is not getting anything because your nipple has no milk ducts. So even if the child is struggling hard, he is not getting anything in his mouth. so if uh, the child is demanding immediately after 30 minutes and that has been the pattern for really long then you must work on your latch work make it a deeper latch so that he gets there are better draws and he is getting more milk in a lesser time and then you should see that he is able to sustain for longer also one more point which i want to add is a lot of mothers uh, change their breast very frequently so this yeah. is again something very very important that your breast has two components hind and fore milk and it is the hind milk which is rich in fat so if you are not emptying the breast completely before offering the other breast then the child is only getting the watery part and then he will not be able to survive for too long so then he'll demand again after half an hour or 45 minutes and you will think that oh it's my supply is not enough you know my milk is not enough and that's why he's hungry again so please empty one breast before offering the other if you ask me the time generally their children are able to decide themselves don't consciously because look at the clock yet at 10 minutes i fed then you unlatch the baby and put it on the other side you know uh, the child naturally takes from one side completely and then when he demands to change is when the breast is empty i think mean, initially people should follow like one breast a session kind of a rule for small babies so yeah. that uh, the supply is maintained and as well as uh, you know the baby will 
tend to sleep very often in infant stage so Correct. then we change too frequently right arush yes absolutely right and i mean uh, as you said uh, mostly they survive whether they are okay with one breast but don't again make it a rule if they are yeah. off, uh, demanding you must offer the second breast is absolutely okay you know to demand both your breast in one feeding session i think as the child grows up to be around 5 to 6 months they will be like you know they own the breast so they will just pull out whenever they want it but uh, it's only in the initial stages when you are building that bond with your baby and yeah. starting the breast feeding uh, routine that's when all of these things are more important yes totally right Can we use the stored breast milk in our everyday use since it's difficult to hold the baby for direct breast feeding? Uh, sorry, I didn't get that question. Is she... uh, the question is, uh, can she use the stored breast milk in everyday feeds since it's difficult to hold for direct breast feed? Uh, I mean, yes. Any form of breast milk is again much better than formula. if you for any reason you think that the feeding breastfeeding will not happen for you uh, then of course you can continue feeding pumped milk uh, definitely there is again difference in direct fresh milk and pumped milk but uh, as i said it is still better than formula milk so if you are sure that this is working for you can continue doing it it's not going to do any harm to your child uh, my baby never burps after feeding when he sleeps after few minutes He burps and he gets like stuck. I think throttle is what she means. Yeah. So as we said uh, before, burping does not mean that noise. You know that that comes every time the child burps. It's more important that you just keep the child upright. Now that you know that uh, the child uh, burps after three to four minutes, and keep the baby upright for at least ten minutes. There is nothing wrong in that. And you have to pat the back so that all that you have fed goes down and it's settled in the stomach, and they are not spitting up if they are uneasy. So again, the same thing, and it's okay. It's absolutely normal. Just keep the child upright for a longer time. Yeah. And Arushi, uh, if the child is three months or older, can they give the tummy time after the feeds if the burp is not coming? And uh, what are your views on that? So not immediately after the feed. You know, I mean, there should be at least a gap of thirty minutes before you put the child on the tummy, because again, like this, we are saying, we don't lie down immediately. You eat. You know. Uh, so right. It's concept uh, so it's not about the burping it's just giving some time interval so that everything that they fed are settled and then you can obviously give them tummy time which is a great way to uh, you know work on their reflexes so just give mm-hmm. about 30 40 minutes before you give them uh, tummy time uh this question is going to be useful for a lot of moms out there and i think we can talk about it a little more it is uh my right breast is inverted So my baby rejects the breast and starts crying. If I offer him to feed, try to pump and feed, but can't express more than ten mL. Please help. Uh, so firstly, man needs to undo version because uh, you know not only when there is like a really third degree inversion is when direct latching is difficult. Otherwise, mostly when the child is sucking and uh, uh, pulling, the nipples get drawn out. Okay, so firstly, you need to know that again because most of the mothers are told in the hospital that your nipples are not formed, your nipples are inverted. You know these things are told to them, which again make them feel that they can't feed. And if you are anxious every time, uh, is the child's feeding time, and you are anxious that oh my god, will my child take the feed? It will rub on to the child. It will not happen for you. So this is something which I want to highlight that this entire process of breastfeeding is more psychological than physiological. it is up to 70 to 80% of psychology and only 20 to 30% of physiology you know yeah. so and so we can uh, just pause here for a minute and talk about uh, you know the structure of breast and nipples and how women can do self examination uh, before they become moms for example if they have flat nipples or inverted nipples there are techniques that they can do to ensure that you know the nipples come to a shape where it becomes easy for the baby to feed uh so you know let's right. just talk about a couple of such techniques which can help moms correct the shape before uh, they start your breastfeeding journey correct 
so uh, originally the, uh, the the uh, the study was that you we can prepare the breast during pregnancy but the new research says that uh, there is nothing you can do during pregnancy whatever you know so uh, originally we were told to do nipple uh, massage and nipple stimulation during pregnancy so the nipples are formed but the new research are totally totally against it so there is nothing that you uh, is is expected to do uh, is uh, the mother is expected to do during pregnancy as soon as the mother is uh, mother delivers the very first thing they can do is like a pinch test so basically you press your press your nipple in a way just to see that are they getting inverted you know sometimes when you press it be- from the behind the uh, nipple sort of pops out if it's an inverted nipple so then that is a case when that is uh, that's less problematic because as soon as the baby latches and pulls the nipples inverts okay mm-hmm. so uh, other than that after you deliver uh, if you still feel that okay your nipples are really fa- flat and the child is unable to latch nipple shields really come handy in a situation like this also something uh, the other technique which works for mothers is that they can pump their breast a little so that also helps in giving nipples a little form and then you can put your child to latch you know so if uh, uh, this mother technique where you and use an empty syringe and you try to pull it out does that work so a lot of hospitals in india use it but uh, it's not one of the best devices because if the syringe is not cut evenly it can lead to bruises in the mother's breast so there yeah, are the syringe is much smaller than the areola exactly and every breast size is different you know every uh, nipple size is different so it doesn't fit uh, all the nipples and then it, if it rubs against the syringe's surface it can lead, because of friction it can lead to uh, wear and tear of the skin so if you have to there are also nipple pullers you know instead of the cut mm-hmm. syringe which can be used because they come in various sizes so that can be used for formation of the nipple but most of the time the nipples gets inverted with because of the suctioning by the baby or a pump so when the mm-hmm. child takes the breast in the mouth the nipple increases its size by double because of the suctioning sorry so that's why i think uh, feeding if you keep feeding the baby eventually you will see that your nipples are being formed and in the mm-hmm. beginning when you are having a challenge that the child is not latching you can either use a nipple shield or you can pump just before feeding because because of the pumping su- uh, suction the uh, nipples get inverted and then you can help the baby latch so that really yeah. helps for a lot of mothers yeah and just to summarize our discussion for our viewers here who's facing this issue i think first is that um, if you keep feeding your baby uh, and ensure that there is a deep latch the nipples will start forming themselves and it will become easier to breastfeed the first 10 days or you know the first month is always challenging uh the nipples do tend to get sore but don't get disheartened with it you can use nipple shields as arushi rightly pointed out and uh, breastfeed your baby with the help of them pumping is also an option but always when you start pumping the produce will always be low like 10 ml is fine it's it's also a process that you need to repeat and learn and then pumping as well becomes easier nobody can produce 100 ml of milk in one pumping session in your first time it is also a gradual process correct correct in indian temperatures only for 2 hours uh, should the breast milk be saved i think that is something we covered it's 3 to 4 hours but depending on how hot it is there in where you are staying at room temperature uh, you can make a judgment call definitely uh everyone says that breastfeeding helps in weight reduction but i am gaining weight uh so you start to see the benefits post 6 months so if you're feeding your child exclusively for the first 6 months then you start to see its benefits at about 8 to 10 months because your body's metabolism really gets better and that's when it starts to burn fat you know so uh the body is it's really if you start going into the science behind how our body is made and why do we gain fat it is really amazing so all the pregnancy weight that we put on that fat is used to make milk so when i say that we need only 500 extra calories it's actually 650 to 700 calories that we need so the and the rest 250 or 150 calories is used by the body right burning by using the body's fat you know and that is how you start reducing your pregnancy weight 
so naturally the process is perfect you know if you have faith in it and believe in it so lot of mothers who are about to wean their child the biggest biggest fear is that what about a weight loss because mm. naturally when they have fed their child for over a year one and a half two years they have become so thin that they've never seen themselves so slim and now their fear is that once they stop feeding that additional burning of uh, 500 250 300 calories a day will go so they will start putting on you know so this is something which will benefit you but just give it some time it will reap yeah. its benefits in the later stage not immediately and especially not in the first 6 months for sure and i think you know everybody's body is different they react yeah. differently it's a combination of so many things yeah. your activity levels your diet what kind of food you eat at what time do you eat how often do you eat how much water do you drink do you exercise or not uh do you go for a walk how active you are i mean there are so many things right yes. weight loss is not a linear thing which is completely dependent on breastfeeding it's a culmination of a lot of things and so if you are wanting uh, you know to reduce your weight first of all you should only start exercising after the go ahead from your gynecologist and once you do try to maintain a healthy uh, holistic diet and uh, you know do some yoga and uh, lighter exercises in the beginning very gradually yes very very rightly said so this is again a combination of lot of things yeah uh okay next question is one second yeah, there are a lot of questions <laughs> have less milk from starting so i have also taken many powders which can increase production but there is still no result so again as i said milk removal is the key you know if you are uh, if you are not removing your milk efficiently uh, whatever you eat or drink will not help so all these uh, powders and whatever they increase your milk synthesis but if milk is not removed if milk remains in the breast it inhibits making new milk so mm-hmm. please please uh, don't just be dependent on these uh, on medication and food and oral consumption to increase your supply the removal of milk is the most important these things works only in combination with removal of milk and not just in you know just by doing by eating you will not see much of a result yes. and i think uh, somebody also asked in one of the questions yesterday is uh, about taking deworming tablets or i think we can just generalize it to say having medication along with breastfeeding for whatever reason uh so what are your views on that and how can they manage if they need to take a medication how do they manage breastfeeding along with it need to take medication there are a lot of safe medicines which are safe to take during pregnancy so you can take those but if you have to take medicines which are not safe to take during pregnancy then depending on their half life you will have to stop feeding for some time you know if like and these are generally uh, in very severe cases like cancer or when the mother has to go to radiotherapy when breastfeeding has to be stopped but in most of the generalized cases we have safe substitutes and the mother can take those medication and so again it has to be always in consultation with your doctor you cannot self prescribe and self medicate that's an absolute mm-hmm. no when you're feeding your child yeah right and i think sometimes uh and you will be the right person to say uh do you think that if they are taking some medication for whatever reason uh they can uh, just pump the milk discard it and uh then uh feed the child after a certain period of time is it advisable or is it not advisable uh so uh, the time frame is very important you know there are a lot of medication which has a very long half life when we talk about half life is when they are excreted from the body from the mother's mm-hmm. body so if uh, even if so how do you decide uh, you know uh, till when like which feeding session can you pump and feed so all these things cannot be decided at the at by the mother you know 
for this you need an expert uh, and uh, somebody who can guide you as to if you can firstly take the medication and if you are taking the medication which is contraindicated then for how long can you not feed or when do you have to pump and dump you know so mm-hmm. uh, yes of course it is done uh, you do pump and dump if the medication is not safe but that duration and the number has to come from the doctor because it varies from medicine to medicine uh my baby sleeps at 12:30 the night and sleeps through the night till 5:30 uh and he doesn't want to feed during that time what should i do i think you should enjoy it <laughs> yeah so again age is very important factor you i need matlab i we need to know what is the age of the baby because eventually uh, they are as we discussed they are able to sustain for longer as their gut matures they are able to sustain for a longer time generally the rule is that from the mother's perspective we don't let them uh, you know have a gap of more than 6 hours because post 6 hours that leads to dip in the milk so if again as we spoke that if the child is gaining fine and you know his other uh, behavior signs are absolutely normal you should feel absolutely blessed that your mm-hmm. child is sleeping for so long and enjoy it completely there is absolutely no, nothing wrong in that you know yeah. because some children they tank up before they sleep they take every one hour and then they go for one long stretch Sylvie, can you hear me? Yeah, we got calls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was just saying that uh, sometimes children will wake up every hour in the night to feed, and sometimes they will sleep the whole night. Both are normal. In fact, none of these things will remain constant. The same child who was sleeping through the night will start waking up every hour. So there are sleep regressions, and during the first two years, the children reach many, many milestones, and it keeps on changing throughout this time. Correct. Uh, we have the last couple of questions, and then uh, we will, uh, you know, maybe take questions on DM, or you can DM Arushi directly and ask her in case you have any uh, more questions. To you know, is it okay for the newborns to hiccup after every feed? Yes, it is absolutely okay. That's normal. Hiccups are absolutely it's just a reflex, so it's normal. Again, uh, keep the child more upright so that uh, the digestion is. You know, other than that, it's absolutely normal. It's just a reflex reaction. Yeah. I think uh, one last question is, uh, and I think a lot of women will have this: is that my four-month-old wants to feed every hour, my four to five-month-old, and uh, what should I do? uh should i start solids so let's start to talk about starting solids when is the right time to do it uh not before 6 months completion of 6 months and the reason why we reach this milestone is again that their guts are very very immature they're not ready to take solids so solids again is a very big uh, topic in its own that we need to see if the child is ready taking the feeds frequently or you know showing interest in family food or putting your hand in your mouth these are not indicators that they're ready for solids you know they are they should be able to sit little upright you know their neck should be more stable and uh, and that is generally the uh, milestone which children reach after they have completed 6 months of age so until unless advised by your pediatrician a child should not be offered solids till he or she completes 6 months this is very very important um if your child is demanding every one hour and this is 4 month is the uh, age you need to realize that this is the time when the child also starts to teeth teething process starts and teething is very very painful for children just for mother's knowledge it is as painful as our periods pain just to understand from the child's perspective 
and sucking at the breast is very very comforting for them you know so that's why when the child starts to cluster feed and for you you should feel very blessed that you are breastfeeding because it's the easiest way to pacify your child if uh, the child is not being breastfed then you will have to carry your baby rock the baby keep singing to the baby to pacify the child and you know really ease him of the discomfort but now that you're feeding the baby it's so easy that you put the child to the breast and he's comforted so please take this as a blessing rather than you know like a challenge and this phase will definitely pass please hang on and you will see that um, he's he slowly and gradually start you know the gap will start increasing but please don't uh, stop a feeding or wean him off just because of this because it's just a phase which will pass for sure i think really that he said and you know all the moms should realize that this is such a beautiful journey that they waited to experience for the you know maybe they were planning their child and then they were uh, in the pregnancy phase for 5 9 months so just take the first 6 months positively uh don't get irritated because of the number of feeds or you know having to sit for longer hours you are just building the blocks of immunity for your child and setting up that child to have a healthy life ahead on the strength that they get from your breast milk yes safe right? yeah very beautifully uh, put i totally agree on that and uh, and uh, one must always looks at look at the big picture because uh, yeah. this is just like 2 years of your life which you're giving for your child looking after 10 mm-hmm. years 10 years down the line or you know he will he will he or she will get so busy that we will be running after them right now they are after us and we are getting all like worked up and after some years we'll be running after them that please can you give me a hug you know can we talk and they will have no time you know because this is the reality so please enjoy this moment hold the child as much as you can because after a point they wouldn't want to be held also because there's so much they want to explore that they just don't want to be held for so long so uh, it's so important that you cuddle your baby and don't be scared of holding him too often no child gets uh, spoiled because of love you know it's absolutely okay to hold your baby to hug the child and wo kabhi especially indian cultures mein ye bolte hai ki wo bigad jayega you know usko godi ki aadat pad jayegi so don't get into all of that enjoy your motherhood to the fullest because uh, it is one of the most beautiful gifts every mother can experience right and anushi just wanted to ask you you have a couple of minutes more the questions are just like streaming in do you think we can take them up or would you like to take them up offline uh, it's absolutely okay if we have the time because uh, i think we we also have just 4 minutes before the session goes off on its own so whatever we can take i'll be more than happy oh it's okay oh yeah it's one it's going to be one hour now right yeah yeah uh, I think in Indian households, it's very common traditionally to give bright water and homemade good tea to small children. Um, what are your views? And you know, in in case a woman is in such a situation where uh, family is recommending, how can she, uh, you know, be strong and refuse such practices if they are not advisable? Yes, I mean, of course, it's not recommended at all because uh, we don't know what's going in that, uh, you know, preparation. And when we are not even giving water to the baby, giving anything else is just not uh, safe. So please, if you can avoid it, nothing like it. Uh, yes, we have lot of uh, little cultures in our Indian tradition. So I, the only thing I tell mothers is to choose the battle they want to fight. They don't have to, you know, stand very strong against everything. uh but uh, yes in whatever politest way and uh, probably if uh, the if the doctor tells the family then the impact is always more you know so probably mm. that's why i always feel that grandparents or the husband should always be part of the doctor visits so that they can also understand you know what is right and what is wrong for the baby and uh, that way uh, it will also sort of bring a lot of like, like the stress from the mother's head that she doesn't have to do all the explaining part and uh, so please i would really re- uh, re- request not to give any kind of grind water grind water or ghutti please keep it simple and natural just feed your child and that should do good you know if the child every child is gassy every child is gassy it's not just your baby because uh, as i said that gut is very very immature so just because the child is being gassy is not your cue to introduce any kind of ghutti or grind water you know just feed your baby because there's nothing better than your breast milk and just keep it simple and natural 
and uh, when should we start cow's milk is it okay to give cow's milk to a 7 month old baby it's uh, as per the new uh, uh, guidelines by aapp uh, aap american academics of pediatrics not until 1 year it's the biggest cause of uh, allergy so no cow's milk for at least a year post one year you can introduce and see if it suits your child or not right and uh, if the child is in a lot of pain due to teething how do you uh, help him and you know what can you do to uh, continue the breast 